Okay, welcome back for another adventure with Workbench. Uh, this week we're going to be looking at pressure vessels and the use of shell models. Uh, this video specifically will show you how to set up a shell model from the uh, to create a mid surface and make a shell model. So we're going to start a little differently this time, and we will start with just pulling the geometry here from the component systems, and this allows us to work from the um, and we'll go ahead and we double click on that and that'll open space claim and then I'll show you how we connect that in with the static structural later and it's just a little different way of setting up the flow. And so here we are in space claim and we're going to go ahead and just open this solid body pressure vessel uh, which should be uploaded and available to you as well to start with. And you can see we've created uh, a well, part of a vessel um, it has one end, hemispherical cap, and a cylindrical extension. And we have a, have a distance there. This distance could easily be adjusted. If you have any concerns about um, whether we've got enough distance there from the edge to reach midpoint, we can make that a little bit longer. Um, now, we're going to model this, and you're going to compare the answers that you get with the shell model to a solid model. So if we were going to do a solid model, we could go ahead and start, take this right into Workbench and begin to constrain it after we, we section it a little bit. Um, one of the things that's going to be helpful here is to apply axis symmetry. So we could take just a pie slice of this uh, to be able to create a smaller section that we want to use. And I'll go ahead and maybe we'll section this and we'll create the mid surface. So, in order to do that, we're going to need some, uh, some planes to section with. And we can easily come in and, and it's going to kind of guess some planes and, and this doesn't take much... Uh, uh, so, okay, so now I could get a 90 degree slice. Um, if I wanted, I could also create one at an angle. And we'll go ahead and go with the 90 degree slice right now. Um, so then I can come in to prepare. Um, and here we have commands that can be used to help us get ready for finite element analysis. And so we're going to split by plane. Okay. So we go ahead and select that. It says click a target object. So we'll select the solid. And then I can select one plane. And you can see that it split that in half. I can unselect by de-clicking click one of those and I'll just go ahead and select one of these halves and I'll select the other plane and so now we have in we have it in three pieces and we have this 90 degree piece so that will be a smaller model and you'll see it also makes it a little easier for setting up our constraints now I could take this into the um, into the solid model and I could just suppress the elements I want to or I could select them here and I right click and suppress for physics and and then the surface here I also suppress for physics so now those won't be part of the analysis and that the other surface was just this piece here and I'll go ahead and just click on that which actually hides it and I'll also do those. And you can see there's a little X up there saying those are suppressed for physics. Okay. So again, I could go in and analyze the solid body right now. Um, one little other trick that I'll show you is the formation of a parameter to make changing these shapes easy and predictable. Uh, one of the things that's helpful sometimes is to be able to create parameters. As uh, we talked about an issue of space claim, it's not a parametric program in the sense that we're used to in most of our CAD um, applications. But you still can create a parameter to adjust these. I have found that it's a little bit unpredictable how it responds, or maybe it's just not to my intuition. But if I come in and select, and you see we've got a dimension, and there's this P next to it. If I click on that P, that's going to create that as a parameter. See, now it's grayed. And I can unselect that, hit the Escape key, I can select this other dimension, make that a parameter. Remember, because this is not parametric, it's not assuming 
and guaranteeing that those two are tangent. So I need to define those separately. Uh, I learned that by experience. Um, so I'll go ahead and unselect that one, select this, add yeah, that as a parameter, and then escape, select the last one, and I'll make that a parameter. And what you see is that we've got these as, uh, as dimensions here. Oh, looks like one of those didn't take. So let's see. Okay. So I have four. So I can come in now, and it's a little bit more like your CAD package. I can click on that, and I can make this, a, say, 22 millimeters. Oh. And it failed to build. Let's see. That helps. Let me make this. A little bigger, okay? So that made it a little bigger. Let's see if that's enough to get this one to work. Okay, so you see you can change those, and I could, I'm going to change them back for now. But that'll make it easier and more predictable to be able to build your, uh, to adjust these dimensions if you want to adjust the the diameters of the parts in order to explore the impact of the aspect ratio of the parts. So let me just adjust these back. Okay. And see there, it mattered. For some reason, it cares what order um, I adjusted the straight cylinder versus the hemisphere. But we can adjust those back and forth. These parameters also will show up in Workbench. And if it behaves nicely, you can adjust them without coming into space claim. So now let's look at how to make a mid-surface. So you can see that's another tool here on the prepare. And I can select that mid-surface and it says select a pair of offset faces. Um, and so what we can do Okay, so you can see it selected one tangent set and the other tangent set, and now I can hit uh, complete, and it's going to create a mid surface. If I slip over to the structures tab here, I can see that better. If uh, it says that this is hidden, but uh, okay, now it's it's gone. So you can see I've got my mid-surface there, and what we'll find is that when it'll automatically calculate a thickness that we can use in our shell models. Okay, so we're done here. Now we can proceed to the uh, to ANSYS Mechanical. Um, now here I just have my geometry. So what I'm going to do is I can bring my st static structural and I can wire it up after the fact, but if I just highlight geometry and let go, it's going to uh, create that and automatically wire that across. One of the things that could do for me is that, for example, I could create a second analysis that was also connected to that geometry that was a different type. Now, as before, we can proceed. Um, of course, you'll need to come in here and add your engineering data, uh, but we'll follow down the main line and create our model at this time. Okay, so I brought my geometry in here and I have my midline surface. If I look in here, um, well, it looks like that's the only thing that was imported because it turned off the physics and the other problem. Um, if I look at here, I can also I click on the geometry, I can see that it has a thickness value. Um, so this is at six millimeters and now I can easily change this for analyzing other cases. Uh, if I click here, become a parameter, uh, which if we go back to Workbench, I can see I've got a parameter set. Um, can open up, and there you see those dimensions for the, um, the outside groups of my solid geometry and my thickness of my mid-surface. Now a note, because this isn't parametric, if I change these values of these radii, um, it will not change the thickness here. Uh, those are entirely independent. Okay. So how will we constrain this? Well, the, the pressure 
is pretty straightforward. We just need to put a pressure on the inside. And if you're using this for your homework, to check your homework and verify the internal pressure, then you would want to uh, assign a, you could vary this value. Um, if you're just trying to compare the analysis, as long as it's a linear analysis, it doesn't matter. Um, so we'll go ahead and hit 100 megapascals. Note here this box again. I can click on that and make that a parameter so I can change it in that other box and then rerun my analysis from there. But I need to select my geometry. I've already selected it, so let me hit apply. All right, so here I've got two surfaces at the same point, but that'll determine the direction of the pressure. Now I need to make sure this isn't going to, I need to put stress everywhere, put battery conditions everywhere that this is cut. So I'll put a displacement and I cut it back here. So that's part of the plan. So let me select edge and select that and apply. And that is in the Z axis. So we'll set that equal to zero. And now add another displacement. And this is in the, I don't want it, it's normal to the x-axis. So again, it's symmetric. So I don't want to have, this, I'm applying symmetry. So there's no deformations um, normal to a symmetry plane. So nothing normal to the x-axis here. And um, nothing normal to the y-axis on this top face. Oops. Okay, so let me add another uh, displacement and we'll select the face and apply. And so the normal to that edge is the y. So we'll set that equal to zero. Now, if you were to select a different angle, say at 45 degrees, you'd have two options. You could define a new coordinate system that was at that angle. And you notice here, you can specify this relative to particular coordinate system. Um, or you could define a, a Cartesian coordinate system. So one of your displacements would be nothing in the uh, radio, in the uh, tangential direction. Okay, so I've displaced, I've constrained it here, there, and there. And now, just to make sure, I want to fix one point in all axes. So let's go ahead and do support, and I'll use fix support on this one, and I'm just selecting that point right there in the middle as a stationary point. You know, actually, that's going to be a problem, because I'm going to keep that from moving in the Z direction, but this is already constrained in Z, and it's going to want to stretch. So I need to remove that constraint. Okay, um, let's go ahead and look at our mesh. All right, one of the things you notice is the graphics in the mathematics. The mesh is only a square with thickness values, but for graphically, it's showing you how thick it is representing and you can see it's a nice uniform thickness and a, a pretty pretty good looking smooth uh, mesh there okay so let's go ahead and our solution let's add a few values and because we want to might want to look at the components of so the longitudinal tangential and radial stresses let's add each of these principal stresses so we'll add the max the middle principle, which would be our sigma 2, and our minimum principle, sigma 3. And then for failure purposes, we may want to see the equivalent uh, stress. And it's usually nice to be able to see a measure of, of the strain or deformation. Then we plot the, we'll plot the total deformation here. Okay, so let's solve. And because this, is, this mesh is so compact, um, it should solve fairly quickly. Okay. Right on Q. Okay. So we can see max principal stresses um, are higher in the, um, 
in the cylindrical section than in the other one. Though the stress is significant in each location. And then there's some uniform region out here, but with some, some peaks and, and high and low values here during these transitions that you may want to think about uh, where those are coming from. And, uh, and then the minimum principal stresses. And again, that would be uh, worth giving some consideration as to the source of those. Note here that there is a difference around the axis. That says that there's a, some kind of challenge with the, um, the symmetry conditions here. Is that in ideal symmetry, um, we would not see those, those issues. Okay, so that's a simple shell model. You only look at the stress and you can compare that. So let me show you one more trick that you could use to help extract information. If I select on max principal stresses, and I can come over here and I can make minimum and maximum or average, whichever I want. Um, I'll go ahead and just select all of these as parameters. Okay, and so those are parameters, and now let's come back to Workbench, and you notice here are all those values, and they have their um, they have their labels so that you can see what they are. And it may make it just a little quicker, if nothing else, to be able to, to calculate those out. Okay?